Hello and welcome to another chat. It's quite interesting some of the things people find on beaches to get washed up. Uh, if you're walking along a beach, you're probably looking out for something interesting. I'm going to talk about some of the crazy military equipment that you might find. I don't know much about squids and uh, sea monsters and stuff like that. That would make a cool video, but I talk about defense analysis. So we're going to talk about the underwater drones, the torpedoes, mines, that sort of stuff, narco submarines. Like my other chats, it's unscripted. That's obvious already. So let's get on with it. First, the underwater drones. Um, this is what you think of when someone says underwater drone. Basically, it's a small robot that's used uh, either by a Navy or military, sometimes also by scientists to gather data. The data it's gathering is generally uh, civilian military agnostic. It doesn't really care. So it can be spying even if it looks like it's a scientific device. This particular example was found in China in 2012. It's quite interesting. It looks like a torpedo at first sight, but actually there's a big giveaway that it's not a torpedo. This is the same device. Um, if you look at the back, it's got quite large control surfaces and a pretty small and simple propeller or, or screw. So you can guess that it's not going to go very fast. It would be very slow if it was a torpedo. That generally puts it in the category of a drone. Um, this particular example, we don't know who built it or the name of it. Uh, they didn't put that on it. But generally speaking, you can work out who builds them because they're identifiable. Actually, not very many of these wash up on beaches at all. I keep a little database of interesting things that wash up on beaches and do some tracking. Actual underwater drones, pretty rare. The people who own them are pretty good at keeping hold of them. This particular example, however, was seized. It's a US Navy owned device. It was seized by Houthi uh, movement in Yemen uh, a few years ago. Identifying it's pretty easy because actually it's written on it. It's uh, just visible in this photograph. You can see Hydroid and you can see the, the emblem of the Kongsberg company. It's a Remus 600 UUV. UUV is just a proper term for underwater drone. It stands for uncrewed underwater vehicle. AUV is an alternative, it just stands for autonomous underwater vehicle. Different countries, different people use different choice of those terms. It means the same thing as good as. What is much more common than proper underwater drones, however, are these. These look like an underwater drone, but they're more properly called a, a glider. And they work quite differently. These are all different models found in different places in the last couple of years. This is a Chinese one, Sea Wing. These are a little bit controversial. Quite a few of them are turned up in Indonesia. It suggests that China is using them to gather intelligence in other countries' waters. But it, they all work the same way, whether they're Chinese or any other country. It's pretty cool how they work. Essentially, they use buoyancy as a way of getting forward momentum. So they, they start to sink to the bottom of the ocean and they use the wings that they have to convert that downward sinking motion into a forward motion. And when they reach the depth, they sort of dive down. And when they reach a pre-designated depth, they start to inflate that bladder, oil bladder, um, and then they rise back up to the surface. And again, they've got the wings, so they're, they've got a glider effect. They're sort of zigzagging up and down the water column. The other distinctive thing about them, there's no propeller, um, for most of them that is, but, but generally there's not gonna be a propeller and there's a very long aerial, normally at the back. Um, sometimes this is retractable, might be broken off, but generally you've got this long aerial and what they do is they stick the tail above the water when they're at the top and use the aerial to communicate. These don't have very much control over where they're going, so they are the sort of thing that does wash up on beaches. Going back to the example in China that we don't know who built it, probably Western, but we don't know. One thing, if you find uh, one of these drones and you're trying to identify it, you can use the sensors on it, uh, the electronics to work out who built it. There's a problem though. Um, the Chinese ones, which is the, the top here, use the same sensors or visually the same sensors as the American ones. Either they've purchased these uh, devices on the market, which would be legitimate, or they copy them. But uh, it's just interesting to show you that. 
Another thing that washes up reasonably frequently are these wave gliders. Now these are really cool. They look like a surfboard, usually with some uh, solar, pa solar panels rather on the top to get energy. They have lots of aerials, different models have different aerials. It's the aerials that are usually interesting because they, they can be used for both scientific research or gathering military intelligence. What's really cool about them is not what you see here though. This surfboard part of them is pretty vanilla, but underneath deep uh, under there, the keel, they have a second body suspended. And this has large wings as it were, and it uses the wave action, the up and down wave action to generate power to power the device which is really cool. So they're incredibly efficient, but they don't have much control over where they're going, at least if they're strong currents, storms, things like that. So they, they do wash up occasionally. Super cool device. So it looks a bit more obviously military is this sort of small aeroplane looking device. It's actually a communication boy. It'd be towed behind a submarine. Um, most of the ones that have washed up are Russian, but they can be, you know, similar devices have been used by other countries, including the US in the past. Essentially, it's a small, I'm going to say glide or aeroplane looking device, which um, the submarine reels out the back and it has aerials on it. So submarine stays deep. This comes to the surface, still attached to the submarine and relays communications. Another device, um, which looks a bit like a underwater drone, but isn't. This was found in February this year, in again in Indonesia, I think. Really interesting. I wouldn't have been able to identify myself, but with some expert help, it I was identified almost immediately as a streamer retriever device. This is quite cool. How, what this is, is if you have a really long towed sonar array, like a long cable coming out the back of a ship or a submarine, it can start to sink. In particular, if you have seismic survey streamer, that's what they call them. So a seismic survey streamer, long towed uh, uh, cable coming out the back of the ship. If it gets, starts to sink, it can be a problem. You can lose it even. So these devices are attached to it periodically. And if they get to a certain depth, they uh, raise, you know, blow up a large airbag and lift the whole, use buoyancy to lift the whole device back to the service so it could be retrieved. Great, incredibly dangerous. Um, so how this person, this soldier is standing on the left there, that's the worst thing he could have done really. Um, these devices work by uh, popping a compressed air cylinder, uh, an airbag out the back. Um, that would have gone right through him. So we can make some jokes about his manhood. He would well, it would have been deadly, frankly, if that had gone off. And it can't say he wasn't warned because there's actually a big warning on it. It says warning contains CO2 gas under high pressure. Do not expose to temperatures above 130 degrees Fahrenheit or 54 degrees Celsius. Do not drop. You know, it doesn't take uh, a lot of brain power to realize if you've got, if you see something and it says do not drop, then don't pick it up in the first place. It's dangerous. Um, this really was dangerous, but fortunately, it seems to survive. There was no actual accident. Something that looks dangerous um, and might be is this. This is not a missile. It does look like it, but it's not. It's actually a type of UAV, uncrewed air vehicle. Um, we're used to drones like quadrotor drones. They're now pretty normal, but the military has some that look like airplanes. The ones that wash up on beaches tend to be target drones. And I think the reason for this is that they're relatively small and they're often used by navies for, as a target and sometimes they fall back into the water and they're not retrieved they're, they're typically going to have a parachute on them so that they when they finish their mission they parachute into the water they hit the water at low velocity so they don't break up and then a boat goes along and picks them up occasionally something goes wrong and they end up washing up on the beach so quite a few of the uncrewed air vehicles that have been on beaches have been target drones of different types often orange or red or yellow, but uh, this case it's actually black as well. Um, it's actually upside down, the one on the beach. It's uh, the uh, rudders, which, you know, it looks up the right way, but actually those rudders should be at the bottom. You can see that from the picture of this particular model. Okay, an easy one. We know what this is. Um, this is exactly what it looks like, and it's every bit as dangerous as it looks. If you see a mine on the beach, don't go up to it. 
Um, and this is one that was found um, just a couple of days ago in the Black Sea by Romanian forces. They, they cleared this. It's actually a Soviet era mine. The three prongs on the top are what you think they are. They're for setting it off. It's meant to be moored to the bottom. Some, some of them are just free floating, but generally speaking, they're moored to the, the bottom of the ocean. And sometimes those moorings break loose and they float away. This is uh, Romanians clearing it using a diver, brave guy, very skilled guy, I should say, you know, uh, explosive ordnance disposal. So what makes them go bad? The obvious one is contact. If you see those horns sticking out of the top, don't go and wiggle them. I had good fortune to have a tour of a mine warfare mini museum really display. And there's you there's an example where you can grab the horn and try to set it off. Uh, you get a flashing light, I think, or a ding. Uh, it takes a fair bit of pressure. You couldn't, you know, it was much harder than I thought it would be, but at the same time, it was definitely you could set it off by brushing against it. It was pretty easy. So those horns are fragile. Don't don't go and play with them. Another way that more sophisticated minds work is acoustic. Um, so if you make the wrong noises around them, it could go off. Magnetic, be careful of your watches, your breathing apparatus if you're, if you're in the water. Yeah, really dangerous, of course. And pressure, this is least dangerous for a human, I, I would guess. Um, I don't know for sure, but I'd guess if, it's, if a ship passes over top, it, it detects the, the change in pressure and blows up. The bad news is, though, all of that is only good while, a, while the mine is in good condition. Old age of any explosives make them more unstable and corrosion and all that stuff could make it so that the whole mine could just explode at any moment. Generally speaking, you see a mine, really don't go near it. It's a no brainer. Something else you probably shouldn't go too near, torpedo. This is a very obvious torpedo. It's in good condition as well. You washed up on a beach in Vietnam. It's a Chinese one. Interesting about this particular one is it's a type that was not in the reference books. We didn't know that China had this exact model of torpedo until one washed up. We still don't know what it's called. They didn't tell us, right? You could guess from the color of the, the front of the torpedo that it's a training round. It was. Um, it's painted red, sometimes red and white stripes, things like that. I wouldn't rely on the color of it to tell you whether it's safe or not to approach it. Just a curiosity, that little nozzle at the back or, or universal joint, that's actually probably where the cable would be attached. It's why a guided torpedo that broke and that's probably how it ends up getting washed up on a beach. This looks like a torpedo. I think if I saw it on a beach, I'd think it's a torpedo as well until I start trying to cross-reference it, is actually a, a decoy. So it's fired by a submarine. Um, usually these are smaller than a torpedo, but very similar. And it makes noise to convince other submarines or ships that you know, the submarine is somewhere where it's not. It's a decoy. Treat it with respect, though. It looks like a torpedo. So else it's called a torpedo that's not a narco torpedo. These wash up on beach occasionally. And... Essentially, these are devices that divers attach to the outside of, an, of a merchant ship. Generally, the merchant ship doesn't know about it. You know, obviously, sometimes they do. They're attached by clamps. You can see one of the clamps still here. The other one's broken off. That's probably part of how it ended up getting washed up on a beach. The good or bad news, depending on how you look at it, if you find one of these on a beach, it probably has got a load of drugs in it. Um, each of these is one kilogram of cocaine, and you can see the markings to tell them where different batches are going, that sort of thing. Doesn't carry anything like as much as say a narco sub, but still that's millions and millions of pounds, dollars of cocaine. Um, and the reason is that if you find it on a beach, it's because it's fallen off a ship. It's not how it's intended to work. Another thing you find on beaches, um, particularly if you're in Latin America, it are narco submarines. Um, obviously narco submarine, the term is a colloquial term. It, then generally speaking, not true submarines. This example, like most of them, is what you call a low profile vessel. It, can, it runs very low in the water. What happens is they go on one way missions from Colombia up to Mexico, typically, sometimes across the Atlantic and other routes, but usually Colombia to Mexico. 
is a one-way trip. When they unload them, they scuttle them. They, they try to sink them. And most do get sunk. But increasingly, over the last few years, these newer types, which are more shoddily built, they don't sink and they end up washing down in the currents and end up on a beach in Costa Rica or somewhere. The engines are typically removed and there's no drugs in them. So, you know, you're not going to get rich from finding one. But jokes aside, I think this would be the most interesting uh, device you can find on a beach and comparatively safe. This is what it would look like if it's complete. It's a very similar design. Um, got three outboard motors, sometimes two, sometimes four. You've got a small cabin at the back, and then you've got lots of fuel and drugs ahead of that. So the cargo hold is there in the middle. Um, I think that would be quite interesting to find, but they're pretty rare in Europe and, and America, North America, um, although some have been found in Spain. Okay, so I think that's everything. Back to this original mystery object. It's interesting because it looks like a mine. Um, if you saw that on a beach, treat it with respect, but it actually is a Christmas ball ball um, that's fallen off. I don't know whether a big Christmas tree or, or a, a, you know, probably in a uh, shopping mall or something like that. And it washed up on the River Thames in London and caused quite a scare. But you can, if you look at the top, you can actually see this Christmas ball ball. Okay, hopefully you found this interesting. If you do like it, please share, please uh, give it a like, um, subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for listening.